Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This video is called a call to prayer because God wants to call his people into deeper and deeper prayer. God's going to put his church in this earth today into Gethsemane. We're going to be going into more Gethsemane time. Jesus Christ is going into battle as the church has never experienced it before. And we will be victorious. We will stand. God told me in 2003, early 2003, or it was late 2002, He said to me that there's a great struggle coming. But you will stand, for I am able to make you stand. And I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? And he said, there's a great struggle coming, but you will stand, for I am able to make you stand. And he did that two more times. I, I kept saying, Lord, what do you mean, Father? Show me what the struggle is, Lord. Let me see it, Lord, and you know, so I'll be prepared and know. And, and the Lord would say, he just said to me, you, there's a great struggle coming, but you will stand, for I am able to make you stand. And he did that four times total. And each time he was a little more emphatic, he said, There's a great struggle coming, but you will stand, for I am able to make you stand. And this is not just for John Farrell. This is for the body of Christ. See, when God communicates to us, he's communicating to us as individual people, but yet it's to the whole body of Christ. That's why when the Lord had me make the video encouragement to share, there's so much that God wants to communicate to his body through the fellow members of the body, through the various members of the body. And he is calling us to prayer right now because of the sufferings that are coming upon the church. The church is fixing to enter into the fire, the baptism of fire. And fire burns, but it also purifies. And in Jude, the book of Jude, starting in verse 20, it says, Jude is talking to the church and he's saying, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you have to be praying in tongues. And I don't think that's necessarily what he's talking about here. It could be. But and I pray in the Spirit. We pray in, in other tongues. But praying in the Holy Ghost. What does it mean to pray in the Holy Ghost? It means that he takes possession of your vessel and you enter into the session with Jesus at the Father's right hand. And you're entering into his fight and his battle. Okay, for the souls of men, that's what it means. And for the church. And to defeat all these works of darkness, make it manifest that the defeat has been accomplished. See, the, Jesus accomplished all the defeat of the devil on the cross. It was done, even really before that. He drove him out. He said, now is the prince of this world driven out in John chapter 12, verse 31, before the Last Supper. See. So what we're seeing today is the manifestation of that. So he's calling us to enter into prayer in the Holy Ghost, letting the Holy Ghost take us over. Let the Holy Spirit have your vessel and just kneel down before him and worship him. And pray and commune with your Father and just love Him. And let me tell you, 
When you start doing that, your mind's going to be attacked. This is what happens. We get attacked in our minds about circumstances in life or everything that's going on with us in the walk, whatever it might be. You know, it'll be issues about others, issues about ourselves, issues about this and that. And we have to, when that happens, you have to just press in. And the best way that we have understood from the Holy Spirit to do this is to open up the Word to the Psalms, your favorite psalm, or open it up to 1 John, or open it up wherever the Holy Spirit shows you to open, and just begin to read out loud as you worship. Just read the psalm, and then just worship the Lord, and then just, just keep doing that. And, and then when you enter into that true worship, the, the enemy has to flee. He cannot stick around. He, he will not stick around that. Okay. But the Gethsemane gets tougher. You're in Gethsemane now, and you're in, okay, and you're praying, and you're, you're pleading with the Father for the souls of men. And then you get breakthrough, because the joy of the Lord will come upon you, and you, you receive the breakthrough. You know you've touched the Father. And we do this as Christians. We must do this every day, every day. The Bible talks about a tithe. 10%, and that's a starting point, okay? The Lord showed us personally He wants all of our lives. He wants every single thing that we possess. He wants all of us completely and totally, okay? That way, if He calls upon you to, to give it all away, you're able to do it because you've already given it all away in your heart, see? And that's proven by Abraham. You know, Abraham, God called Abraham... You know, come sacrifice your son to me. You know, Abraham didn't bicker. It, right then, boom, Isaac was gone from his heart. God just circumcised his heart, took Isaac out of there. And Abraham was able to go all the way to Mount Moriah, a three-day journey. And then Isaac carried the wood up to the mountain. He was probably 30 years old. And he was bound, his own father bound him and put him on the wood and reached to slay him with the knife. Hallelujah. And he got resurrection life. Glory to God. He got resurrection life right there. Abraham did. Hallelujah. And so did Isaac. Glory to God. And that's what God's calling us. It's so awesome. He's just showing me this right now. Glory. You know, let us lay it down because he's going to pour it out. He's going to pour it out. He's going to pour it out. Hallelujah. The resurrection power and life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. Glory to his holy name. And he says, so we're praying in the Holy Ghost. Verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. What I was saying at the beginning of this video, God said, you will stand, for I am able to make you stand through this great struggle. Okay, He's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. If you're not really sure that you can enter into that Gethsemane, you really do need to just get with Jesus and, and cry out to Him and say, Lord, make me more of a prayer warrior. Prayer is the first call of a believer. The first call. When Jesus went to Gethsemane, He told Peter and James and John, He said, pray with me. And they fell asleep. And how many of us have fallen asleep and not prayed with Jesus? And Lord, I pray you have mercy upon your church tonight, Lord. Raise up a praying army to intercede with you and enter in session with you, Lord, at the Father's right hand. By the power of the Holy Ghost and through your precious blood. Amen. Hallelujah.